Well, I'm Cammie Davis, and I'm going to do a, a little piece on collage. I grabbed a couple of images from some of my paintings. Um, I grabbed some of the wallpaper and I cut them into lines, and some tissue paper, a couple of different colors. So I kind of figure out how I want it um, laid out on my piece. I'm going to start with the bottom piece, which are going to be these these straight ones. You know, as you're working along as an artist, you tend to find your own things that you like. Uh, you don't want to use expensive brushes with Mod Podge because it is hard to get out. Um, afterwards, a lot of people use like those little felt ones. I hate those. So I just get these <laughs> seven or eight dollar ones from Home Depot and I do wash them out. And then just lay the tissue paper down, press it down, and then with anything that's flat like this, with a thicker paper, I'll use my hands and books and stuff. With a thinner paper, as you use either the brayer that you get at the art store or some type of roller. I even on my large pieces, um, like this one, I use a big paint roller, and it, it's to get the air bubbles out. So you use the Elmer's glue on the heavier things, and then the Mod Podge for the leaves and the lighter things. Well, the leaves I use the Elmer's glue as well because they're you know thicker. Okay, so this goes over the top. Then. Yeah, the Mod Podge you do like like in three layers usually at least. You can do as many layers as you want. It's a sealer on the top, okay. as well as a glue. So um, with any of the lighter weight stuff like regular weight paper or tissue paper, it works as the glue, and it's okay. good because you paint it down. Whereas like with a this glue, you're putting oh, right. little lines. You're not going to get it as flat mm -hmm. on the flatter pieces. Mm -hmm. But because it's thinner, I find that with wallpaper or leaves or anything that's thicker like that, it's just harder to get it to hold. A big tip that I learned, and it's helped me a lot in getting my work to look the way I want, is that when you're using um, a regular weight paper, is to soak it in water first. If you are using your own images and you're printing them, I have it done on a laser printer, so like I'll just take it down to stay. Just get it on regular weight paper. You don't want the heavier stuff because then it would tend to um, buckle more. Uh, but the laser printer keeps the ink from running. I found that putting it in a cookie sheet is I can really just get the whole thing in. So you want to pick a bowl or whatever it is that you use that's big enough to put the whole piece in. And then um, let it sit for, I don't know, like 5, 10, 15 seconds. Lay it on a towel just for a second. And that's just to absorb some of the water. So I'm going to paint the Mod Podge. And you want to use thin layers. You don't want to just plop it down and do it like really thick. It's better to put a bunch of thin layers down. It's really weird because it's white and it looks really gloppy. And you're thinking, oh my god, this isn't going to turn out. And then magically it dries. Now when you, if you use that Mod, Mod Podge at the end, it, it, you called it a sealer. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you don't have to, obviously you don't have to put it behind glass because none of yours are. But it is definitely sealed and protected so that... You know, I think it's sealed better than when I use, on, on pieces that I'm not uh, mod podging, um, I use a, a clear sealant. Um, I actually think this is better. It's just such a hard finish. And then I'll take my uh, foam brush and I'll get it just a little bit wet. And that's just to keep it from like grabbing hold of the paper and tearing it. Just kind of squeeze it out a little bit. And then you just roll it real gently. I would say not more than like two or three times in each spot. And that's um, just to keep it from ripping or moving the paper at all. So I always take a little bit of time with this step. And um, you're just getting the air bubbles out. If I'm doing over edges like I am right here, make sure that you get the edges stuck down and, and glue there and stuff so it doesn't come up later on. So I'm going to make sure this is saturated. It feels like it is. And it does make it um, a little harder to work with, just meaning you just want to be a little bit careful so you don't rip it. Lay it down, get a little bit of the water off. And then also take the time when you're putting it down to position it kind of like right before you set it down because it is harder to move once you put it down in it. You don't want to manipulate it and rip it and stuff. But see, I can move it just a little bit to kind of even it out. So that looks good. Then I'm going to roll this piece down. Get all the air bubbles out. And then I'm going to put a layer of tissue paper because I think that'll be kind of interesting because you'll be able to see through it. So I'm going to paint my Mod Podge where I'm going to put that layer. And then definitely use the, um, the roller to get this down. Now the tissue paper, you will get a lot of little wrinkles in it and that's actually something I like about it. I'm going to go ahead and put this little tissue paper down on the side. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this top layer on. If I'm gonna cut something on the sides, I'll put the top layer down and then I'll let it dry completely because then it, it kind of hardens the tissue mm -hmm. paper and then you can just take your X-Acto knife and run along and it gives you a really clean, a really clean cut. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? Yes. Do you, vary, do you vary your strokes on the, as you're brushing the Mod Podge or does that mess? Um, as far as the material goes, I, I think that's where I am really careful, especially like right now where um, like this tissue paper is wet, so I'll just really lightly do that part. Or if I'm doing a leaf that could break or something like that. If I'm doing right here where it's just wood, I'll just, you know, go crazy. Any others? Can we, on the, the board, if we don't have the equipment to make these, is there anything we can buy at Home Depot or any place or Michaels that's similar? Well. I think there's probably a lot of options. I'm interested to know how you how, how you, you do that. Them. You have strips of, of She has a lot of tutorial online because I was there. Oh. Terry oh, was forced it. to <laughs> shoot it for me last time. She it was good through. too. She goes through every step on how to make that. How do you how do you uh, find it? Um, you go to my website, which is cammydavis.com, and if you haven't subscribed to my blog yet, make sure you su subscribe. Um, and then it also says tutorials. Um, I end up using MDF is what I have found uh, works the best for me. It's a really um, a dense fiber board. So you need a table saw. Um, sure. Or you make friends with your Home Depot people and say, hey, I want this such and such size. Can you cut this up? Usually they'll do a couple cuts for you for free. Okay. Yeah. And um, I use um, these little side pieces. I use a half inch sanded plywood. And I do cut that up on my table saw. But before I, I did learn to do that, um, there's different, you know, like trim pieces and stuff that you can get. So you can get those at Home Depot. You can go to one of the reclaimed wood stores and find some beautiful wood and just, you know, get stuff that's all the same width mm -hmm. to cut it up. Um, you do need a miter saw. Yeah, that's the, that's the rough. But, but, you know, the thing is go and try whatever you see, you know, and just start trying things until you find what works for you. You don't necessarily have to have it, you know, framed really nice. And I feel like it yeah. would have been so easy for me to get intimidated by what I didn't know. So when you're asking what to use and stuff, I really you know, suggest just looking around at your life, places that you go and stuff, and being inspired by it. And yeah, a canvas would be too flexible. Yeah, exactly, it gets weighted down. And it doesn't hold it as well, mm -hmm. all the layers and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I do think, answer, I think there are a lot of things probably available at the craft store and stuff if you just go and start looking. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. you could even go to a garage sale or Michael's or whatever and get a picture frame sure. and use that. It's the right size. You mod podge over and no one knows his glass underneath. I mean, I don't think you have to be limited. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's a great idea. I like the idea of found things. Yes. And going to the recycle stores or garage sales and was specifically looking for things that you can turn into art. It's really fun, I think, once you start looking at things that way, too, because you, you see the world a whole di different yes. way. Because you're when you're going places, you're not just thinking, okay, what can I buy and set in my house? As you're looking at things going, ooh, how can I change this and make it mine? So if you find photographs that are interesting, um, you know, with your own work, these are photographs of my artwork, but you could take photographs of your dog or whatever. Um, if I have tried gluing the actual photographs down, and that doesn't work as good, but just take it down to the uh, copy shop and copy it on to colored do a color copy of it and use that. So you can come up with so many images of your own. Any other questions? Okay, well if you guys end up with any questions, go to my website, just send me an email or do a comment. If you end up doing any collages or any type of work based on this, I would love you to send me a picture of it. That would be really fun to put on there. So anyway, thank you so much. Can you call your in depth? See, it's a, see, this is what it looks like at this point, and that's kind of scary. But um, I'll post a picture of it to my website after it dries. So later on tonight, I'll post a picture of it, and you'll see it's completely clear. It's amazing. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. Oh, I appreciate it. And your patience.